Welcome to week three in our training series. This week we're going to focus on reading your dog and getting away from those line drags by laying some more realistic style tracks. I'm Tracker Mike with Michigan Deer Track and Hounds and let's get down to business. This week as we start laying our tracks we're going to really want to pay attention to the wind. Go ahead and test your wind and we're going to want to lay our tracks so the dog's nose is going into the wind. Every track we do is going to start with a scent pad at the beginning to introduce our dog to the scent. After we've made our scent pad, you can go ahead and strap your tracking shoes on. We're going to start out from the scent pad with very small steps. Then we're going to increase in length of steps as we get farther and farther into the track. If you're using the tracking sticks, you're going to make your scent pad just as we did before. You're going to start out with the wide grind off of the scent pad at the beginning of the track. Go into a straight line drag. Then we're going to move into small steps just like with the tracking shoes. Bigger and bigger as we get farther and farther into the track. If your dog needs a little extra assistance, you can go ahead and bait the scent pad. And then as you step off, you're going to take a step and lay some bait right at the back of your boot. And then we're going to lay another piece of bait on our next step. And then our next step, for the first five yards, we're going to do every step, and then we're going to grow the number of steps in between pieces of bait until we're at the point where we're not going to use any bait at all, and we can go ahead and just walk out the rest of our track. As you're laying your track, you're going to need to know exactly where it's at so you can read your dog and learn their tells. I use natural markers sometimes, like a bush or a tree. Sometimes I'll use those little landscape flags that get put in the ground or marking tape just so you know exactly where the track is at. Sometimes you'll come up on some unexpected distractions. Here we came up on some deer hair, but we're going to continue laying our track right next to it and just see how our dog responds. Once you get to the end of your track, you're going to take off your tracking shoes or lay down your tracking sticks and leave your treat jar at the end. Once we've laid our track, we're going to want to exit a different way than we came in. So we're going to walk out and around and back to the beginning. If you've worked your way through the other videos in our series, we would love your feedback on what we've been doing. If you kind of like our format with this combination of the talking head classroom style and going out to the field with some demonstration stuff, or if you'd prefer one over the other, we would just love to hear back from you in the comments. On the other hand, if you love what we've been doing, go ahead and let us know by hitting that like button below. Now we can go and get our dog out. As always, we're going to let them kind of sniff around and familiarize themselves with the area and burn some of that car energy out. Notice our sit-stay target with the backpack as we put our harness on and let the dog calm down for a few minutes before we get started. Then we're going to leave our dog in our sit stay and go do our shot site inspection. As you get further into your training, you're going to want to develop your dog's patience and leave them a little bit longer in that sit stay and do your inspections a little bit longer. Now we've done our sit stay, we've done our shot site inspection, our track runs out this way, so we are going to approach with the dog's nose already facing the direction of the track. Let's take a look back at Franklin. He is still doing very well in his sit stay and we're going to go back and get started. Now it's time to bring your dog up and introduce them to the shot site and get them started on the track. Now as they start, you're going to want to stay in position until they commit to the line that you laid. As you can see in the beginning here, he's going to kind of sway back, right, left, as he starts to figure out the direction of the track. Now Franklin's going to settle in and get a little more lined out on the specific track. You can see here he pops his head up and then he starts to zag again. He kind of came off the track and he's working his way back. So as we come around this tree here, Franklin's going to lose this track again. You're going to notice that he does this shake. He does that when he gets anxiety, either when he's on a hot track or when he loses the track. He's then going to circle around to the left and I'm going to stay put. I'm going to let him circle.
And he circles back, nose to the ground, and we're off again. As anticipated, he does get tied up at that deer hair that we saw earlier, but I'm gonna give him the opportunity to work through it. Otherwise, if they don't work through it, we are gonna coach them through it with a leave it command and bring them back to the track. But he does pretty good just stopping for a minute and then moving right on to the track. Now that deer here was off to our left side, so he was a little left of the track here. You will see his head come up as he works his way back to the right and he's re-looking for the track. He's testing the ground again for the track and then we're gonna notice his head go down and he's gonna line out again. This is that second bush that was on our right hand side that I went by. So now that he's back in the vicinity of the track, he needs to reline the track out and get back on it. You're gonna see that anxiety shake again here. And then he's gonna get back to work and figure out the line. Easy breezy finishing out this track for Franklin. We get to our tracking shoes and our bait can. Right after we reach the tracking shoes, we wanna do some high energy good boys, attaboys, some really high energy pets, and then we're gonna have them go into a sit stay. Developing this solid sit stay before you reward your dog is gonna pay off dividends in the future. Much like our other skills, we'll start with a short sit stay and then develop it more and more for a longer sit stay as we continue in our training. And last but certainly not least, let's keep your dog hydrated. We are trying to make a well-tuned machine here, so we want to make sure that we're taking care of our dogs. So our format for this week is going to be pretty simple. We are going to back down on the distance of our tracks, but I'm also going to say that you can go ahead and back down on the number of tracks that you're doing each day. Now you don't have to, if you want to do more tracks, feel free, it's only going to benefit your dog as long as you're not burning your dog out. So day one, we're going to back way down and do a 50 yard track and a 100 yard track. Day two, we're going to move up to a 100 yard track, a 200 yard track. Day three, you guessed it, 200 yards and 300 yards. So on until we get back into that 600 yard, 800 yard range. Good luck in week three guys. If you need any help troubleshooting, go ahead and leave us a comment and we'll make a video to address your specific issue.